Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today it's time for another video about what's blooming in my WaterWise landscape. Now it's the last day of August, and I wanted to show you what's been blooming in my yard. I live in Utah Zone 6 7, and before we show you what's blooming right now, let's show you the blooms that you missed. So now that we've showed you what you missed, let's show you a little bit of what's blooming right now. Now like in most places, August has a little bit of a lull in blooms, but right now we do have a few blooming. And let me show you some of my favorites. Now this right here is definitely one of my favorites. This is a hardy hibiscus. I think this one is Summer Storm. I'll put the name of all of the flowers on the screen. And you can see the little tiny, I don't know if that's a predatory wasp or predatory fly. I'm still learning the difference between the two, but he definitely loves that bloom. And the more and more flowers that I grow, the more and more I appreciate the bugs that visit them. Well, it's later in the day and it's cloudy, so we don't have a lot of pollinators out. But another one that the pollinators absolutely love is one that has been blooming for several weeks, and this is my Pugster Blue Butterfly Bush. This one I cut back to probably about a foot and a half high this spring and it's hit three feet tall again, but it doesn't get much taller than this. These are a shorter butterfly bush. Another thing I love is the length of time that it blooms. 
You can see the old blooms right here. You can see the blooms that are almost done. And then right down here, you can see the new blooms that are getting ready to start. So it has a very long bloom season. Now another one that's starting to bloom that I've been interested to see how it looks. This is a grass. This is not a flower. This grass right here is the, is the pink muley grass. Now the pink muley, muley grass that I've seen blooming over at the Conservation Garden Park just gives the entire grass a whole pink haze over the top. Now this is a new plant. This was planted last fall. So we're just gonna see if we get that pink haze. Right now I'm not seeing a pink haze, but they are really delicate, pretty flowers. Now they're really not flowers, they're inflores inflorescences. But I'm interested to see if we get that pink hazy look. Now another one that's a little bit early is this is a kind of a burgundy mum that I have. This has been blooming for several weeks now. So I think this was fo featured also in my July video, but we still have a lot of buds left and normally September is its month's, month to shine. So we're gonna get a lot more blooms here shortly. But August is definitely the month for the sedums to start blooming. This one I think is called Peach Flambe. I'll put the name on the screen but there's so many different colors in this. I think it's really, really gorgeous. We've got a bumblebee that is absolutely loving this. And we have a whole bunch of different sedums that are getting ready to bloom and I'll show you those, but this is one of my favorites. We've still got a few blooms on my chase tree, but it's largely done. We'll get scattered blooms on this all the way through October. And uh, we actually still have bumblebees that are visiting it. The blooms are absolutely gorgeous. The wild thing salvia is still blooming. It's really beautiful. As is the catmint. Now the catmint is back up to full bloom again. We cut this back in June, almost to the ground. Now it's almost back to the same size it was when we cut it back before. And I won't be cutting this back again until it's completely died back. And that'll probably be sometime in November. There's definitely still color here in my front yard in August even though we're winding down. Things are starting to look a little bit tired, but let's show you what is blooming. One of my favorites is plumbago. It's really hard to get this color of blue in a flower, especially in fall. I absolutely love it. It's a gorgeous plant. I've got several more for, through here. Here's another sedum down here. And I'm not sure what variety it is, but it's a lower growing sedum. This one up here is an autumn joy. Autumn joy sedums are just about ready to burst into full, beautiful bloom, and their blooms are a lighter pink. So we've got the hot pink down there, the lighter pink up here. I think this one's called Blue Oyster, and it's got even a different color. I absolutely love the color of those blooms. The Sundancer daisies are still blooming along with all the reseeded alyssum. Some of it's reseeded. The darker purple are plugs that I got from the nursery. The Zauchinaria or hummingbird mint is also still blooming. Another one that's blooming a little bit longer than I thought it would is the Drops of Jupiter oregano. And it is still looking great. And all the little pollinators usually are swarming this during the day when the, when the sun is out but the pollinators absolutely love it. This is another sedum that has the most gorgeous color. This one is the, I think it's, I think this one's Autumn Fire. I'll put the name on the screen, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Look how dark pink that color is. And it contrasts beautifully with the catmint behind it. The narrow leaf milkweed is still in bloom. Just like the one with the, the yellow flowers. So this one is Aslipius tuberosa, I think. And I'll just put the, I'll put the scientific names. So this is also a milkweed, as is the narrow leaf, leaf milkweed. Another one blooming beautifully this time of year is the foxley thyme. The rest of my thyme is done blooming, but the foxley thyme seems to bloom a little bit later and it's just really a beautiful, gorgeous color. I love the variegation in the leaves. 
Another one that's been blooming for several weeks and is still going is my hummingbird mint. Look how gorgeous that is. The bumblebees and the hummingbirds absolutely love it. The hummingbird seems to have slowed down. I think the migration might be over. We do have a few that I saw out this morning, but uh, they seem to have slowed down quite a bit. In my green stock, I think this is also a perennial, but it is a, but it's a tender perennial here. It may or may not survive the winter. We're in zone six slash seven, and I think these are hardy down to zone seven, maybe possibly just to zone, zone eight, but this is the hot lip salvia. And the thing about these is every once in a while, you'll get these little white flowers. The rest of them are red. They're really, really pretty. The echinacea is pretty much done. This is gonna get cut back. Now, the reason I cut this back is my echinacea seems to spread like wildfire. I know the birds love the seeds and a lot of people say it's really good to leave them up. But to me, the work of thinning out the mass amounts of echinacea that reseed themselves is not worth leaving them up. So this will be cut back here shortly. But we also have a different kind of sedum here. This one is a whiter flower and the leaves during the rest of the year are absolutely gorgeous. They're a darker red, almost a blue color. Black-eyed Susans are coming to an end too. Those will also be cut back. And this is no another gorgeous alyssum. Now alyssum is an annual it does tend to re reseed itself, and in some areas it's considered invasive. But I find that it's an extremely drought tolerant annual, easy, easy care, and it brings in the pollinators. So I just love letting alyssum reseed itself on my property. It's not too aggressive, pretty much self sustaining, and I absolutely love it. Here's another one of the mums that's starting to bloom. It is the same as the one on the other side of the property. I just divided this one and it started to bloom already. Then we're going to have our bright yellow mums. These have got another week or two before they start blooming, but we've got several through the property and they bloom around the same time as the sedums. And so we'll have yellow mums. We're going to have our blue pugster butterfly bush. We're going to have our sedums and that will be kind of the last hurrah until we start getting our autumn color. Here's another sedum. I'm not sure which variety this one is. It does tend to fall open just as it's flowering. I may try and find another one that is dark like this that doesn't open up when it flowers because I think there might be some of them, but this is really a gorgeous color. Now, one thing that it does do is even though it falls open like this, it will leave just a gorgeous color all the way through the end of the season. I usually end up cutting these back around November when I cut everything else back. But until that time, it just leaves a nice pop of color while everything is starting to die back. Now, once again, we're going to go to an area that's not part of my front yard. I usually keep these videos confined to my front yard, but I needed to show you my endless summer hydrangeas. Now, as I said, I'm in Utah and these hydrangeas usually struggle here, but if you find the right spot for them, they're glorious. This has been a beautiful year for them. It's the time of year where their blooms are starting to turn a mauve color. This is the color they are when you add a little bit of aluminum sulfate to the soil. They get kind of a purpley color. Normally they're clear pink because our soil is alkaline, but then they change they'll turn to green. So after they turn this color, they'll turn to a green. And then when it starts to become fall and the temperatures get a little bit cooler, they'll turn this glorious mauve color. And if we get lucky and have a normal autumn or what used to be a normal autumn, the leaves also change color and it's just gorgeous. But these like a lot of moisture. This is on the north side of my property. This will get a tiny bit of morning sun. The rest of the day it's shaded and it does get the same amount of water as my vegetable garden beds because this zone right here is attached to my vegetable garden beds. So everything that I put in here can tolerate more water. We've got the hostas and we've got the glorious Japanese forest grass. 
and then we've got our hydrangeas. Here's another one with the clear pink blooms. So I just absolutely love these hydrangeas. This has been a really good year for them. It's been hot, it's been in the hundreds. I've only needed to water them three times a week because of the soil. I put a lot of compost in here and I always try and keep it mulched with wood chips. Also in my backyard, we're at the tail end of my anise hyssop blooms. So these anise hyssop, bees absolutely love these too. We've got a lot of bumblebees out these days. And I think what's happening is the bumblebees, you know, especially when it's hot, the bumblebees are stocking up so that they can survive the winter. So there's a lot of extra bumblebees that I don't normally see. So the anise hyssop is absolutely gorgeous. So it's hard for me to believe that summer is just about over and fall is starting to begin. It's not going to be too much longer before the hills behind my house have their fall color. Matter of fact, usually by this time of year, we do see some fall color in there already. It's a little bit late this year, but I would love to hear what has been blooming in your garden in August. What are your favorite flowers and what you're looking forward to in the fall season coming ahead? So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has been helpful, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.